so basically what we are going to do here is we are going to discuss about the trapezoidal rule okay now let us talk about the formula for calculating the integral by trapezoidal rule so the formula is integral b minus a f of x0 minus 2 summation of i is equal to 1 n minus 1 fxi fxn okay divided by 2n so this is the formula of uh, trapezoidal rule okay let us talk about uh, these terms so basically n is number of segment a is the lower limit and b is the upper limit there is also one term here that is h which is known as step size that we have discuss the formula for fi uh, finding out uh, the step size is b minus a divided by n okay and there is one more term m that is number of points which is equal to n plus 1 that is number of segments plus 1 okay so if we if we look graphically what actually we are doing in trapezoidal rule it's very simple okay basically what we are doing here is this is your x axis this is your y axis So basically what we are doing in trapezoidal rule is we are replacing or approximating this complex function by a first order polynomial. So basically what is a first order polynomial? It's nothing but a line. So basically what you are doing here is you are approximating this by a line. So when you say area under curve, so it's going by trapezoidal rule, it's going to be this. Okay. So let us talk about one more thing. So when you replace it by a first order polynomial, it will have some error. If you replace by second order polynomial, it will have some error then third it will have some error so when you talk about trapezoidal rule when you talk about simpson one third rule th simpson three rule what do you think which is going to be more accurate so obviously simpson three rule is going to be more accurate than trapezoidal rule and simpson one third rule okay, because what we are doing here is we are replacing the function by a third order polynomial obviously bull's rule is going to be more accurate than simpson's rule but we are not going to discuss bull's rule so let us not talk about bull's rule here so yes so simpson uh, three year rule is going to be much accurate as compared to the trapezoidal rule and simpson's one third rule okay so once you have discussed this we'll we'll 
talk about a problem we will see a problem okay where we are going to find out the integral analytically and we are going to find it out using the trapezoidal drawing we will see what happens how much error we get and how we can reduce the error using trapezoidal drawing okay so let us say you want to solve this problem numerically okay now obviously you can find out the integration of this function it's a simple function using analytical method okay so the question might uh, the question might arise at this point is why we are solving it numerically okay so the answer to this question is we are just seeing an example here okay i just want to demonstrate to you the concept of numerical integration but in real life uh, this function is going to be very complicated okay such that you cannot find out the integration of those function numerically uh, uh, analytically okay so so before we talk about numerical integration let us first find out the integral integral of this function analytically so now you tell me how you are going to find out the integration of this function an analytically so first you are going to write down integral of minus 2 4 1 minus x minus 4x cube plus 2x raised to 5 dx Okay. Now we all know that integral of x raised to n dx is what x raised to n plus one upon n plus one. So integral of one is going to be x. Similarly, integral of uh, x is going to be x squared divided by two. Minus integral of x cube is going to be x raised to four divided by four plus two. Is going to be x raised to six divided by six. With also we have to sub substitute the limits. Okay, so you'll re realize um, that uh, when you substitute the limits here, the value of integral that we are going to get is going to be. You can you can just check the value. It's going to be. One one zero four. Okay. Now let us solve this problem numerically. And the first method that we are going to use is going to be trapezoidal rule. So we all know the formula of trapezoidal rule. What is the formula of trapezoidal rule? If you can recall from the last lecture. Okay, for you, I'll I'll just write it down here. So this is the formula of uh, trapezoidal rule. Okay, let us use this formula to find out the integral. Now let us talk about uh, the parameters. Let us talk about Let us talk about B. Let us talk about A. Let us talk about N. I think in the previous lecture we have already discussed uh, B is the upper limit, A is the lower limit, and is <coughs> the number of segments. Okay. So when you talk about this integral, basically this is nothing but A. This is and this thing is your f of x so whenever you find a problem so uh, whenever you you use you, you will will give you a problem or i'll give you a problem i'll always mention and i'll, I'll always give you the value of n that is number of segments 
okay but whenever the value of number of segments is not given you should always assume it equal to 1 okay now in addition to this i think in the previous lecture i have also discussed the formula of h h is the step size b minus a divided by n And also I have discussed M, where M is number of points, that is N plus 1. And also X M is equal to X0 plus M and to H. This is also one very important thing that you need to remember. Okay. So basically what we are doing here is we are replacing the function by a straight line. Okay, this is h because my habit of writing n and h it's like it both both of them look similar, but uh, I'll tell you this is h and this is n. Okay, I'll, I'll try to be consistent next time. Okay. So let us solve this problem by trapezoidal method so let us first write down the function okay so the very first thing that you are going to write down here is going to be your function so what is the function here whatever thing is in the integral that is this is your function the value of a is minus 2 and the value of b is 4 okay and it is given that n is equal to 1. Let us consider the first case where n is equal to 1. Now this is also known as a single application of trapezoidal when you take n is equal to 1. So understand this whenever the value of n is not given you have to consider it as 1. Okay? But uh, in in when I will be giving you a problem I will be giving you the value of n. Okay? And in real life, you always have a choice of selecting the value of n. Okay, this is just uh, for this course I'm talking about. But in real life, the value of n, you can, you can, it's up to you, whatever value you want, depending upon your application. So when you take n is equal to 1, your i comes out to be i is equal to b minus a is going to be fx0. So when you apply this in this formula when you take n is equal to 1 so basically what this whole thing is going to be 0 okay plus f of xn divided by let us uh, whenever you want to calculate now in this problem you just have to find out x of 0 and x of n okay but in uh, when you will you'll, you'll be doing problem where the value of n is more what you have to do is you have to calculate uh, f of x at a lot of points. Okay, so it's always a good habit to solve this problem in a table format. So let us talk about the first column. Let us talk about the second column. Okay, so this is x of i and function of x of i. So let us take about x0. So basically what is x0? x0 is nothing but the starting point. That is the lower limit. That is a. Okay. Now here in, in this problem we don't have points in between. Okay. So directly we will jump on to what is number of points here? n plus 1. That is m is equal to 2. Okay. You can see I have already already told you that's nothing but n plus one. So let me just this here. It's getting to clutter. And what is x n? X n is nothing but equal to b. So this is going to be minus two. So basically this is going to be minus 2 and this is going to be 4. 
So when you substitute the value of minus 2 and 4 in this equation, in this function, so what you are going to get is it's going to be minus of 29 and this is going to be my uh, 1789 so what you are going to do is so this is nothing but f of x0 and this is nothing but f of x n and when you substitute this value here so what is the value of b b is 4 and a is 2 and going to be minus 29 plus 1789 divided by 2 so this is this is the value of integral where you're just taking one segment okay so if you can if you see if you realize what is the value analytical value the analytical value is 1140 1104 sorry 1104 and what is the value that we are getting is 5280 so you should you will understand how much error it is there is how much error there is when you when you, talk, when you take a single segment so you can find out the percentage error okay so always remember from now on if you want to calculate percentage error this is what you should do okay this is uh, the formula for calculating the relative percentage error true percentage error okay so when you solve this what is the analytical value 1104 5280 1104 so it comes out to be 378% so the error is how much 378% so obviously I mean whatever technique you apply whatever method you apply the value that you should get should be close to the analytical value and you can see here just by applying one segment or a single application of trapezoidal rule the percentage error that you are getting is 378 which is huge okay so graphically if you see what we are trying to do with single application is this is my function and I am trying to approximate this function by a single segment okay so don't you think the error is obviously going to be huge because when you talk about the real area under curve is this analytically the area under curve is the red one and when you are finding out the area under curve numerically by single application you are getting this so obviously if you see so there is so much of error okay so what we are going to do now is we are going to reduce the percentage error we want to reduce the percentage error so obviously you might think at this point instead of applying a single element why don't we apply multiple elements okay why don't we approximate the curve using multiple elements So what I mean to say is my motto is to find out the area under curve. So instead of applying a single element, why don't we apply a piece wise multiple elements? So this is this the addition of this, 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 and this 
is going to be the area under curve okay so that is why what we are going to do now is we are going to increase the number of elements okay so when you increase number of elements let me use a different color pen so that you understand it better so when you use different number of elements this distance is known as h that is step size so till now i just told you i just gave you the formula of step size okay but i didn't tell you what actually it is but now i hope you know so when you use a piece wise trapezoidal okay multiple application of trapezoidal this h is nothing but the step size the length of that segment okay and this point is nothing but your x0 and this point is nothing but your x n or x m whatever you want to call call it okay so if you can see here this x0 is nothing but is equal to a and this so uh, xn is nothing but equal to p okay so you can see from here if this is x0 if this is 1 what will be x1 x1 is going to be x0 plus of h what about x2 is going to be x1 plus of h and so on till you reach x okay so the next point you are going to get by adding the step size okay so that is why if you see here we wrote this formula but now i hope now you understand what is the significance of that particular formula so now you can see here that the percentage error is 378 so what we are going to do is by single application you realize it's 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 erroneous uh, it, 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 i'm sorry it consists of a lot of errors a huge error so what we are going to do here is we are going to apply it piecewise okay we will increase number of segments let's take n is equal to 4 okay again if you want you can just see from the previous what is the formula of uh, the positive rule this is b minus a of x0 okay so let us apply apply that formula for n is equal to 4 so when you apply that formula for n is equal to 4 so this is going to be b minus a into f of x0 minus 2 of okay summation of i is equal to 1 now what is the value of n so this this is n minus 1 so what is the value of n n is 4 4 minus 1 this is 3 okay this is going to be fx i plus fx n divided by 2 into 4 so this is nothing but what b minus a divided by fx0 minus 2 into fx1 fx2 fx3 and f of, f of n divided by 8 so again what we are going to do here is we are going to write down the function so again if you recall what was the function the function is 1 minus x minus 4 x cube plus 2 x raised to 5 okay so let us make a table here 
so first we are going to take xi then we are going to take fxi okay so we'll start with x0 and what is the value of x0 it's nothing but a and it's nothing but minus 2 so as i told you xm is equal to x0 plus m into h okay so this is your first point what will your next point the next point is going to be the next point is going to be x0 plus h then x1 plus h plus x and so on okay so we can directly find out So what is the value of x1, x0 plus h? Okay. But one thing now I have realized that we have still not found out the value of h. Again, what is the formula for calculating the value of h? H is nothing but b minus a divided by n. Upper limit minus lower limit divided by number of segments. So you will realize that uh, the value of h that you are getting is uh, so it's 1.5 you guys can also verify just to be sure so this is going to be what minus of 2 okay plus of 1.5 so this is going to be minus 0 0.5 similarly x of 2 is going to be x1 of h that is the previous value this value that is going to be minus 0 0.5 plus 1.5 that comes out to be 1 similarly your x3 is going to be 2.5 and your x4 is going to be so now what you are going to do is you are going to substitute this 2 in this equation so value of 2 in this equation and you are going to find out the value of f of, uh, f of x and if you substitute you will find out that the value is minus of 29 again when you substitute minus of 0 0.5 you will realize you will find out it's going to be minus of 1.375 then it's going to be minus 2 then it's going to be 131.31 and this is going to be 178 1789 okay so now what we are going to do is we are going to substitute these values in this equation so what is the value of b it's 4 what is the value of a minus 2 what is the value of f of x0 it's minus of 29 what is the value of f of x1 it's uh, 1.9375 what is the value of x2 minus 2 and what is the um, what is the value of x3 131.31 one, and so on so once you substitute all the value and calculate you find out that the value of i that you're getting is equal to 151 1516.87 okay and now if you calculate the percentage error true percentage error We'll find out that the two percentage of error comes out to be 37.3 so you'll realize when we took single single segment the percentage error was 378 but now the percentage error here is 37.39 percentage so you'll realize here as you increase number of segments the percentage error is going to reduce okay again uh, if you take uh, n is equal to let us say 8 i am not going to solve this uh, 
and n is equal to 8 but uh, i highly recommend that uh, you do it at home you just try it out so when you take n is equal to 8 you will find out the value of i that you are getting is 1209.1 okay and the percentage error that you are getting is 9.5 percentage so you can see here as you increase the number of segments the percentage error is going to reduce obviously i mean it's expected i mean if you just try to visualize what we discussed uh, just now using a graph you'll realize yeah it's it's logical when you, when you go on reducing when you go on reducing the size of the elements just, just go on reducing it okay, you will realize that the percentage error we are getting is reducing and we are getting more and more accurate percentage uh, more and more accurate integral value of the integral okay again you can you can increase it to 10 20 30 but but when you when it comes to 10 uh, 30 40 50 you cannot do it by hand so in that situation you'll have to use uh, matlab okay you'll have to code you'll have to write a program for a trapezoidal method and then you have to go on increasing the number of steps and then you'll realize and then you can see that as the number of segment increases the percentage error true percentage error reduces significantly okay so this was trapezoidal rule and then now next we are going to discuss simpson's uh, one third rule i hope you understood this okay